Hey guys, it's Saturday. We are out here dialing in the rack on the adventure van and we're going to take a look at the Yakima High Roller versus the Rocky Mounts Brass Knuckles bike racks. We've got both of them here today and kind of some pros and cons we're going to look at. We're going to put them both up there. We're going to check out the bike on it, uh, check the stability, the ease of use and just see what what we need because we have some specific needs on this van and you may have some specific needs on yours. So let's grab the tools and the gear and the box and take a look. We have the brass knuckles from Rocky Mounts, which is of course a bike rack, a two wheel bike rack. So no taking wheels off or anything like that. And this is the Yakima High Roller and just kind of see uh, the differences. I've actually used these Yakimas for years, which is why you'll see that uh, they're used looking. And the current model of this might even look slightly different. The problem I ran into is on the new adventure van we're setting up, we want to have uh, a rooftop tent. So we put the rooftop tent on and these stick up so high above the bars. I wanted to have the rooftop tent in the center and bikes on the outside. Now, a lot of you may not be dealing with that situation, but there are other reasons why people want a low profile bike mount. The Rocky mounts, more so than any others, they have this really low profile mount. I would say the highest point of the Yakima probably sticks up about five inches and the highest point of the Rocky mount sticks up two and a half or three inches. If you really needed to go low profile, this piece could actually be popped out, although that'd be a little bit of a hassle. For me though, it was about being able to open that rooftop tent. So when it swings open, it would clear. Now, we still had to add an extra spacer when we installed the tent so we could have about three inches of clearance because by default, they're only about one inch above the bar. And I'm not gonna do a step-by-step -step assembly video because there's other ones out there and I wanna get to talking about the racks themselves. This one, the way it comes is going to be correct for the driver's side because I'm gonna want my bar out there and we'll be good to go. But for the one on the passenger side, I actually did have to pull this bar out and switch it around. Now it's not a big deal, but it took me a few minutes to figure that out as well. And you just pop this cover off and this just pops right out of there. And then you can access the, uh, the bolts and things for this, loosen it up, pull it out and switch the arm to the other side. The bands will just pop off. And uh, these aren't just rubber bands. This is actually like a stainless steel belted band. So it is very, very sturdy from what I've seen so far. Let's put this up there. But first I'm going to go ahead and put the lock cores into this guy. So you actually pop this piece out of here and then you can put a lock into this, which will allow this to be snapped on and locked if you just wanna prevent this coming out. Now bear in mind the locks do not come with it. You gotta buy those locks separate. The lock for the main bike unit uh, it can go in either side, depending on how you're going to place it. And it was a little bit of a hassle to get in, but I found just kind of kind of hunting around this way until it slid in was the easiest. And once it goes in, it's nice and easy and it, it actually fits in there really nice and locks. So in that sense, I think this is nicer than the cable style lock. It feels much more integrated and sturdy. Uh, and the locking seems to be pretty good. And now if it's locked, of course, we're not going to be able to adjust it or move it. And if we unlock it, you can pull the key out either way. And if we unlock it, we can adjust it up and down, which we'll look at more. Uh, we're just gonna have to loosen the nuts here and we will release this bracket and our front bands are already released. And so we'll just take this guy off and we'll be ready to go up on the rack. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually screwed up the Yakima back to the roof. It's, it's pretty simple, but you do have to bolt it up here and there's no locks for the brackets on the Yakima. Now, I thought we'd go ahead and put the bikes up so you can kind of see a comparison of putting it in both. And we could also see the comparison of both units in terms of the stability. Now, this isn't an e-bike or anything like that. This is just my wife's Rayleigh mountain bike. It's a 29er. Both racks will handle a 29er. And it has a little, uh, little, little wee ride carrier up there. And our van is pretty tall. So typically when I do this, and I've done it lots of times on the Yakima, I'm actually gonna come in here put it on the rail here, and then I'm gonna go in the front and get it right up there and just push it up. And it's a little bit tricky, but not too bad. The high rise locks in right here and you just tighten this up just like this. And then the band goes all the way down on the bottom. Uh, still rolling, bud? Yeah. 
my kids are my crew. Okay, so you can tighten it down. I do like that you can just really tighten this up and you can cinch it up, get everything cinched down on the Yakima. It's good to go. And then of course we can use the cable lock on the Yakima. So just to give you an idea, and I have tightened this down to the racks, rack bars as well. It looks good, it's solid. You'll see that it moves and it's just always done that. And when I first got it, right, or even years after when we're going down the old rough dirt roads and you're looking in the rearview mirror and it's like this, uh, it's a little intimidating, but this has probably been used for about five years. We've had two of them, never broke, always done well. One thing that I found, and this is probably gonna be the case with pretty much any of them, if your tire goes low, which sometimes it'll do, I found that you know if it's up there for a week and I'm road tripping and haven't worked with the bike, if my tire's not perfect, sometimes it'll drop down and then it really starts moving back and forth because you lose snugness. But I've never had a situation even on bumpy roads where it, it fell off or there was one wheel hanging down. I mean, it locks it in there good and it's, it's sturdy. You know, if we were going down the road and I really have seen it moving like this, it's very easy when you're going down a bumpy dirt road for it to be moving like this. So you can kind of see if I'm pushing, I'm not having to push that hard. There's some movement. So that is what the Yakima looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and take it down from here just so you can see that little fiasco. Uh, the Yakima, you loosen it and then you can actually press the button and it drops it all the way down. And I can just go like this. and pull it off there. You can see I'm a little awkward because I put it back up here a little differently than I normally would. I usually would have it a little more forward, but uh, it comes right off there, no problem. And because my rigs are high, I usually do use a step ladder. Uh, it, would be, it would be a little tough probably with a rig this high to get it off without a step ladder. And the pickup that we had uh, was similar to this height as well, but goes up and down pretty easy. Look it up though in this case, should be real simple. And again, one thing I do like is that the, the uh, Allen screws are pretty much the same on everything. It comes with this one Allen key, but regardless of whether you're using the one that came with it or your own set, it's, uh, it's standardized. So the bottom line is you're just gonna stick those bands in there and they're gonna hook just like that, kind of in a soft contact, pull the door off right here, and you're just gonna put that Allen key right inside and you turn that Allen key, which moves the little bar inside, and it's gonna snug those bands down. Let's go ahead and put this same bike uh, right back onto the Rocky Mounts now that it's affixed up there, and I'm just gonna go straight up here. And I do like how when you go up, there's not really anything in the way. And so on a higher roof like this, honestly, that was easier to get up than I would say that it is on the Yakima. And I've done the Yakima a lot of times and you still have to fight with it a little bit when it's high. This goes up and then these guys can come down. You can grab it right here and uh, just pull and it kind of ratchets down. And then we can lock our bands on the front and on the back. And we can lock it right there with the lock core that we put in and everything's nice and sturdy and locked in. Now, in terms of stability. I got it locked down pretty tight. You can see that it still completely uh, wobbles. Is it more wobble than the Yakima? I don't know. You guys got the video. You tell me. Um, I think they're close. I certainly don't feel like it's going to break. It's just different. Uh, for most situations, this wouldn't be an issue. Pull down, press the button, release the knuckles, and uh, just going to come right out of there. No fight. Just like that, we'll bring her down. And let me grab the camera. I'm gonna show you kind of what's on top here, just so you guys can see, because I know that that last shot there was probably kind of far away as I'm doing the whole bike. So you can see now that I have mounted, I've mounted this on here on the bar, and this is just a standard Yakima round bar. And here's the straps uh, banded in right there. And so you can see, let me just kind of adjust it here folds down and kind of snaps away. And I've got this unlocked still. You can see right here is where I just would tighten it up. And so pretty simple installation, uh, relatively elegant here and pretty sturdy. And most of all, just, just very low profile. But you can see how I got one on this side now. And we've got, we've got one here on the other side. Since I've kind of set the Yakima up here 
And uh, you can see, I mean, the Yakima, just with the parts and stuff, the high roller has the nubs and stuff sticking up. And it's it's way thicker in, in every way compared to the, uh, you know, the high roller. The high roller in most places is only about an inch and a half. And even at this highest point here is uh, about, about th two and a half to three inches off of the bar. And uh, the Yakima, is a solid four to five inches off of the bar. In conclusion, we've handled both the Yakima High Roller, which I have used for years all over all over the place and it's it's taken a pounding i've had two of them on there different bikes different sizes really good the rocky mounts the brass knuckles it also seems like a really good design uh, is is it is it substantially faster to put up and down not hugely is it is it simpler does it go up easier i think the bike does go up a little bit easier on the brass knuckles than it does on the yakima particularly in my use case where i'm kind of having to extend myself and reach to get it up there in terms of stability you know at a glance you might look at the rocky mounts and say well this is all metal it's going to be more stable but yakima has a proven track record and that thing has been solid for a lot of years i've never had any trouble with that yakima we'll see how the the rocky mounts do in the long term i have a feeling it'll do well i like the appearance of the rocky mounts a little bit it's just slim and low profile and kind of under the radar um i believe the rocky mounts does come in a couple different colors too but i just kind of wanted it subdued i didn't want my rack uh my bike rack itself to stand out the big thing for me, the, what drew me to the Rocky Mounts and how I found them was asking around looking for a more low profile bike rack. If you need really low profile for whatever reason, uh, the Rocky at this point, I think, is the lowest profile uh, on the market. You can shout out in the comments if, if you know of anything else but it's not even comparable profile wise to the Yakima and both companies make some other models as well but Yakima does not have anything that's low profile like this Rocky Mounts is and so on that front we have a very versatile rack in terms of side to side stability you know we can look here at at the at the shaking back and forth and they're both going to move i mean i'm 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 pulling on it right and this would be representative of like a bumpy dirt road and i've certainly gone down those and i'm kind of looking in the mirror like whoa are the bikes staying on the yakima they always stayed i don't see that it's going to be a problem on the high roller either i always am a fan and encourage people check check your gear pay attention to your gear when you're going down bumpy roads when you get off the dirt roads and back onto the highway check it out make sure your gear is is secure and stable you don't want things like bikes and racks falling off onto the car behind you so uh, just look at the pros and cons um, at a glance they're both about the same price if i wanted to choose the one that was the most elegant and kind of the the most up to date i would say probably the rocky mounts yakima makes some great stuff though and if you have yakima lock cores on other systems and things that may be an attraction to you because the lock cores will not cross over both seem to be really good racks i'm giving them both an a so far we'll see how the rocky does in the long term but basically when it comes down to it think about your profile think about the look and what you want both good mounts you guys tell me what you think in the comments like and subscribe and we'll go from there